previous class, we have talked about uh, or introduced you to fast Fourier transform and uh, there are certain assumptions in fast Fourier transform is what we are going to talk about in this technique uh, in this lecture and then tell you what are the other methods to find out the frequency content of a signal. Now, when we do fast Fourier transform certain time is being used to do this FFT. Okay. But the question is what happens? What happens in this time? My signal is changing. That means the signal's quality has changed. For example, I will give you another example to illustrate this. I have an impulse, and then there is nothing beyond it. Okay, and th then if I have taken a total time signal of t, obviously this is not true. This signal is not repeating at many at an instance of time. So, this is a gross violation of the stationarity assumption in Fourier transform. Okay. And uh, there are methods which take only a very small amount of time. For example, we had seen that the delta f which I measure is nothing but 1 by t or 1 by n times delta t. So, if I want high or low resolutions, I need more time on the signals. Okay. I want to find out a signal which is having a frequency of 1.1 hertz. If delta t is say for example, delta t is 1 second, here n is nothing but 1 by delta t delta f. to 10. So, n corresponds to 10 if I want 0 0.01 n will be 100 okay, for the same sampling 0 0.001 n will be 1000. So, you see what is t? t is nothing but n times delta t. So, delta t is 1 second. So, this is really 10 seconds in one case, in another case it is 100 seconds, in another case it is 1000 seconds. But in machinery, when impacts occur, something has uh, broken, okay. there is a large impact, maybe a high impact force occurs only once. right? So, well this is not going to repeat at all time. So, this is a gross violation of the frequency uh, uh, representation on time for the signal. What I mean to say here, when I have a sine wave of a single frequency, that means the signal say for example, this is some 10 hertz sine wave the signal sine wave of 10 hertz exists at all times, which is fine, but suppose I have a signal where the frequency is increasing and decreasing. For example, I have a low frequency signal and then suddenly it becomes a high frequency signal. So, this means what? In the time domain, the signal's frequency is changing and this by the way is known as a chirp signal. So, I need to know that this is an example of a stationary signal. Whereas, this is an example of a non stationary signal. 
Okay. So, we need also you know, like we did FFT for a stationary signal, we should find out what are the different methods available for non stationary signal and that is what we look here. So, some of the signal processing methods one is this fast Fourier transform if you look here this is a signal of 1 second durations amplitude from minus 5 to 5. Okay. Here of course, you know this amplitude uh, in meter second square okay. uh, this should have been actually 10 by 4.997 is close to 5 okay. that is within the limits of the measurement here. So, I have represented in the Fourier series of the frequency spectrum of the signal is this, but if you look at this signal here the frequency is changing with time okay, of a non stationary signal. If you look at the spectrum here you may get misled that a sign signal of 5 amplitude at 10 hertz also exists at the same time a signal of 20 hertz of close to maybe 3.5 volt or 3 volts exists. That is a gross violation of our assumption, because if I do an inverse of this signal, I will get a sum of a sine wave of 10 hertz at 5 amplitudes and a sine wave of 20 hertz at 3 volts. Okay. But you see in the first 0.5 seconds this signal does not exist and in the subsequent 5 seconds the low frequency signal does not exist. So, this is where your Fourier transform would fail and that is for the analysis of non stationary signals. Though let me tell you in uh, condition based monitoring 90 percent of the cases can be solved by Fourier transform, but Today, the state of the art is such that people are developing many algorithms for non stationary signal analysis for quickly detecting defects in machineries. For example, like I was telling you, if a defect has occurred, like an impact, something has broken, something has fallen, this can openly only happen for a fraction of a second. So, is the signal processing algorithm very robust to catch such high? frequency or quickly occurring transients and then we will see. So, one such method is what is known as short time Fourier transform. So, in short time Fourier transform what we do we break this time period into small packets of t and do the FFT and then stack them up together. Okay. But again the problem is if I have a good frequency resolutions I will need to have a by good I mean finer I need to have more time and if I have more time I will have a poor frequency resolution. So, this fallacy exists because f is 1 by t or delta f. So, this is true. So, I can break up into different windows and do FFT, but then I will have higher resolutions of delta f. Okay. So, this is what we see here a good temporal resolutions I mean fine in the time, but poor in frequency or good in frequency more in time. So, we will miss the characteristics of the signal. Okay. So, this is a problem which people face certain examples of this short time for a transform is in the first example I had sampling frequency is the 6, number of data points is total time window is 10 and this is some window length. Okay. I can break it up into 4 parts or I can break it up into 1 window of 4 seconds or 1 window of 1 second, 1 second, 1 second one second or I can have it into 4 seconds. Okay. I can take it in one go in 4 seconds or 
four windows of one second each, okay, and uh, each of them because the total number of data points is uh, delta f is one zero two. Sorry, sampling frequency or one by delta t is one zero two four hertz. Total number of data points is. 10240 so i will i can break it up into 4 second window lengths or individual 1 seconds okay if i take it 4 seconds i will have 4096 data points otherwise i will have 1024 points so you will see one has to play around with the number of data points or number of times you are taking it all depends on the window length so your window length window length selection plays around with either delta f or t but uh, people had developed these techniques after to use for non stationary signal analysis but then there are few other techniques which uh, we at uh, iit kharagpur have used uh, to find out the fft or the frequency content in any transient signals so this is known as the empirical mode decomposition so if i give any signal okay there is an algorithm which has to be followed all we do is you know we do not care about the time here we fit an envelope taking the maximas and the minimas and find out the mean of this envelope and try to subtract the mean from the original signal and we land up with a residue and then we repeat this process till we get a monotonic signal which is known as an intrinsic mode function so every signal which has been measured for even a short duration can be broken up into such intrinsic mode functions by this algorithm and one can then find out the frequency content of the intrinsic mode functions and thus have a true representation of the frequency content in any signal be it non stationary be it stationary and that is what i am trying to explain to you here through an example so this is a sine wave okay which is again varying in frequency and then a little noise has been added so these are the intrinsic mode functions of the signal intrinsic mode functions 1 2 3 4 5 6 and so on okay all even for a very small time even in one second of the data and you, you imagine in machinery condition monitoring when transients occur they will occur only for a very short duration and you know the to measure a very very high frequency signal or to have a very high fine resolution i need to have more time period and that is not available to me so more time is not available to me so i will not have a fine resolution which need not be done in emd so this is the denoise signal and then if you can see each of these imfs contain a frequency okay so the actual representation of the frequency of the signals can be very easily done through emd okay so if i was to compare fast fourier transform short time fourier transform and empirical mode decomposition so fft is not conclusive for non stationary signal but empirical mode decomposition can detect any frequency changes with time and in stft either a good temporal resolution or a good frequency resolution can be obtained but emd is an adaptive process and emd definitely depends on the local characteristic of the signal in that sense emd is powerful okay and this is more of an adaptive nature and it is highly efficient compared to the traditional 
frequency domain analysis of FFT or STFT. Uh, this is an example which we thought I will uh, introduce you from our lab. This is an engine single cylinder engine which is being loaded by a dynamometer and this is an accelerometer high, high temperature accelerometer mounted on this engine and this is the control panel for that engine and the data was taken in a data recorder. Vibration data at 1500 rpm and 2300 rpm of the engine was taken. The sampling frequency was 20 kilohertz, but you see the total time of the signal was only for 1 second. So, the IMF of the engine was uh, this is the recorded signal through an EMD process the IMFs were obtained ok. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4 etcetera and the tenth IMF you see it gives a frequency close to the firing frequency of the engine ok. In that way even just in one second of data we can find out the firing frequency of the engine. The same was also repeated at uh, 2300 rpm and the engine's firing frequency was 19.17 hertz. This EMD is also used to find out the cracks in plates wherein uh, uh, just to see uh, the reason I want I am showing you these now so that you get a feel of what kind of equipment later on we will be using in condition monitoring. Usually what happens when cracks occur there is a local change in the stiffness and if you will recall in any system. So, if there is change in stiffness there will be a change in leads to change in natural frequency. So, this is for a plate, but you know this has been tried out in uh, rotor systems where we have you know shafts which are supported on bearings. Okay. And if a crack has developed somewhere, so the natural frequency of the system would change, but in other words, the characteristic of the system would change, and in this method. Uh, this is an impedance head wherein simultaneously you can measure force and acceleration. Okay, you know the impedance of a structure is nothing but force by velocity and mobility is nothing but velocity by force. So, if I have a signal x t or f t this is my system I give certain force f t and I get a response x double dot t I can always uh, do an FFT of this FFT and get the plot F nothing but either x double dot by F or all in the frequency domain. So, this corresponds to the first natural frequency and so on. So, there will be a change and this is nothing but the amplitude and there will be also a phase angle of this and we have seen in vibration at natural frequencies how the phase angle changes by 90 degree. So, if there is a crack in the system there will be change in the value of this natural frequency, but question is this has to be done simultaneously and that is why commercially 
dual channel FFT analyzers are available are used to do this kind of a computation to find out what is known as the frequency response function of a system. We will talk about this uh, later on when we discuss more about you know signals and systems. So, uh, to explain this to you we have a uh, random noise that means frequency all frequencies are uh, generated and this is uh, filtered between the values we want and this is fed to a power amplifier which is driving an electromagnetic exciter used to excite this crack plate and the tip of the exciter we have an impedance side where we are measuring the force and the velocity okay and this is the uh, fft uh, dual channel F this is a multiple channel fft analyzer but this has been used to measure the mobility function of the system so this signals now uh, we did an emd a plate has the dimensions of 2 mm thickness 90 mm is the crack length, 0.5 mm is the crack width and these are some of the instruments which we used to find out the crack and if you look the EMD of a crack plate, the response, I mean here the mobility is not being measured, just by the response of a cracked plate IMF 1, IMF 2 in the same sequence as per the algorithm which I had told earlier and the FFT of the IMF 4 gives the natural frequency as 732.2 hertz. So, you see by doing such analysis on signals in FFT, we can find out the natural frequency of the system. At this point, I must tell you some other properties of Fourier series. So, if I have a signal x t, if I do an FFT, just a signal, I will get a signal x f which is a complex number. So, it can be represented as x real plus x imaginary. So, the amplitude or magnitude of this Fourier coefficient is nothing but x real square plus x i square and these are all functions of frequency. But when I have, uh, so this and there is a term called as power spectrum or auto power spectrum of a signal. X t is represented by S x x f which is nothing but x f times x conjugate f. So, this will boil down to x r square plus x i square f and you see this is though this is a complex quantity Fourier transform of any signal is a complex quantity the, the power spectrum is a real quantity. So, if it was in volt this will be in volt square sometimes people call this as the linear power spectrum, linear or linear spectrum. When it is power, there is a unit square, here this unit is voltage, here the unit is voltage. Okay. But this is for a signal, signal. But when we have two signals x t and y t, there is a term called as s x y f which is nothing but x times y conjugate f. So, this will be a complex quantity. So, this is x real plus i x i f 
y real minus i y imaginary. So, this is what is known as the cross power spectrum between signals. x t and y t. Okay. So, this is the complex quantity cross power spectrum is a complex quantity. So, this auto power spectrum and cross power spectrum are used to find out the frequency response of a system like we saw the case for the plate. So, how do you do that? So, if I have a system I will get some y t and x t. So, the systems transfer function is nothing but y t by x t or output by input. So, I can find out the frequency response function as y f by x f. So, if I multiply them by x conjugate f or x conjugate f. So, I will get term s y x f by s x x f. So, this is thus the cross power spectrum between y and x and the auto power spectrum of x. So, this is again a complex quantity and the f r f magnitude is nothing but the magnitude of this term s y x x and the phase of f r f is nothing but tan inverse if this is equal to f r tan inverse imaginary part of f r by real part of f r. So, commercial FFT analyzers can give you frequency response functions depending on the cross spectrum of two signals and the auto power spectrum and cross spectrum also tells us what is the time delay between two signals and later on we will see its application in finding out faults in uh, systems and its applications. Okay. So, more resources on uh, FFT and its fundamentals can be found in the uh, signal processing chapter in my book. Thank you.